Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Today I am releasing OpenRGB 0.3, the third release of my open source RGB lighting control software. I'm going to show you how to install it on Windows and how to use it to control all of your RGB lighting. So to start, we're going to go to my GitLab page. Uh, I'm already here. It's HTTPS uh, gitlab.com calc programmer one open RGB. Uh, this link will be in the video description. Uh, we're going to go over here to releases. And then um, we have uh, release 0 0.3. That's the new release that I just put out today. We're going to go down here to Windows binaries and download the version appropriate to whatever version of Windows we have installed. Um, so 64-bit on this computer. So I'm going to download this. And then we'll open that. And it's a 7z file. So you're going to have to have 7-zip installed. Uh, if you don't have 7-zip installed, I'll put a link in the description. So you open this with 7-zip. And inside is going to be a folder uh, OpenRGB Windows 64-bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that to my desktop. And so we can close out of this. And now let's open up this folder. Uh, this is OpenRGB. So we have OpenRGB.exe here and we have all of the other files that it needs. The first time you run OpenRGB, you'll have to run it as an administrator. It needs this permission to set up access to the SM bus, which allows you to control RGB RAM and certain motherboards. Uh, if you're not controlling RGB RAM and you're not controlling motherboards that need this functionality, you technically don't have to run it as admin, but I would, I would always recommend running it as admin first. So we're just going to do right click and run it as administrator uh, go with yes and then it does take a little while to set up and start um, when you open the program it's scanning for rgb devices that are connected to your computer and that can take a bit of time and so here we go it's popped up um, so let's just close out of some stuff here make it easier to see so here we have the main window. Let's zoom in on that. And um, what we can do here is we can see all the different RGB devices that are detected. Let's bring that in frame on the side here. So we've got um, four sticks of RAM, motherboard, uh, graphics card. Uh, I got a Corsair Lighting Node Pro. Uh, RGB controller in my case, uh, Huntsman Elite is my keyboard, mouse, um, Razer Firefly mouse mat, uh, Goliath X extended mouse mat, my Chroma mug holder, HDK, Chroma HDK is a LED strip controller that's uh, powering the lights on my desk, base station Chroma, headset stand, uh, Nomo Pro, which are the speakers, and the Kraken 7.1 V2 is my headset. All of these devices are all being detected by OpenRGB. Um, just to note, I don't have any of the official software installed, so no uh, Razer Synapse, no Asus Aura, and no Corsair IQ. I, I, none of that software is installed. OpenRGB replaces all of the manufacturer software. And so with uh, that, we have detected all these devices. We can go ahead and change the color of our setup I'm just going to go ahead and change everything to green. So if we click green and then we click set all devices, that's just going to check, change all of the devices that are connected to this, whatever color we've selected. So green here. So if I click this, all of the setup is now green. So as we can see, if we zoom out and let's just point down here a little bit, all of the devices are green. And we can further change that. Let's see, how about red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta. And you can also use the color wheel here to pick 
any specific color you would like. Now, what I'm not showing you is over here on the floor is my case. And uh, as you can see, it's not orange. It's not the color that I've set. The reason for that is the Lighting Node Pro is what we call an addressable RGB controller. What that means is it can output more than one uh, LED on, on each channel. Um, so what we have to do is set the number of LEDs connected to each channel. So for instance, on this uh, case, I have three fans on top, and these are Corsair ML140 uh, fans. Each fan has four LEDs, so one, two, three, four, and then three fans, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's 12 LEDs total. So what we have to do is enter 12 LEDs in the size for uh, that channel, and then inside the case, I have um, a 15 LED strip that's also in there that you can see the lights inside the case. So on channel one, I have 12 LEDs, and then on channel two, I have 15 LEDs. So I'm going to set that in the software. So let's go back over here to the screen. And we're going to go here and select the Lighting Node Pro. And as we can see, there's all zones. And under here, we have channel one and channel two. So channel one, right now, it has no LEDs connected. So we're going to go to resize. And this is the fan. So I, we calculated 12 LEDs on the fan channel. We'll put in 12. Hit OK. Now it's showing 12 LEDs on that channel. We're going to repeat for channel 2. This one has 15. Okay. And now let's pick a color, say green, set all devices. And now since the size has been entered, now all of the lights in the case are the correct color. And so they will follow all the settings here. And so just so you can see, with OpenRGB, it can control all sorts of devices. Uh, the full list is on the project wiki, but we can look inside the computer here. Let's just lower the tripod down a bit. and look inside. So in here, we have the four sticks of G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory. We've got an Asus Aura X370 Prime Pro motherboard, which has Aura LEDs on the back. We have a Gigabyte uh, Aorus 1080 Ti graphics card. We have um, just a fixed 12-volt uh, LED strip on the water block there that's plugged into the RGB header on the motherboard. And then we also have the LED strips in the case, which are just WS2812B LEDs that are hooked up to that second channel of the Lighting Node Pro. We've already configured those. But as you can see, we can change all the colors at exactly the same time across three or four different vendors worth of hardware with a single click from a single application. So that's about all I wanted to show you for uh, today, just to show off the new release and how it works and how to install it on Windows. It's also available for Linux. Uh, I might do a setup tutorial on the Linux version later, but uh, Windows is probably the one most people care about, so that's what I was gonna do first. And so uh, that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.